Lorsqu'on parle en France d'écologie politique, en France, quand on parle de politique écologique, on pense plutôt à des courants de pensée comme Greenpeace ou à des partis verts. On pense à des NGOs comme Greenpeace ou des partis politiques. Cette démarche qui a connu des fortunes différentes dans les pays existe dans le monde anglophone. Dans le monde anglo-saxon, elle s'est structurée dans les années 70, en particulier dans les années 70, en particulier dans les années 70, geographical, anthropology, and rural science uh, department. In France, we have a political structure for ecological questions, but scientific uh, political ecology is not structured in the field of research. But it's changing. 40 years ago, scientific political ecology was built to be opposed to an apolitical ecology in which the environmental deterioration problems were analyzed and understood under the biophysical or technical angle. It also was built to oppose neo-Malthusianism visions in which it was considered that overpopulation, especially in developing countries, was the main cause for environmental deterioration. Now, starting from this Attitude. The first uh, political scientific uh, research showed that destructive behavior must be thought in a wider context. One of the best examples of this approach is the precursor book written by Michael Wapp, Silent Violence. In this book, what showed that the cause for famine and environmental deterioration in northern Nigeria had nothing to do with an overpopulation issue or a lack of development of education of uh, allegedly uh, bad uh, agricultural policies uh, and practices. He showed that in the name of uh, the liberalization of agricultural markets, small farmers had been encouraged to relinquish uh, practices that made them self-sufficient in order to produce uh, cotton for national and international markets. The change in production and practices had negative consequences. The farmers became totally dependent on the price fluctuation on the market of such products as cotton. And when the prices fell, dropped for the first time on the markets, the farmers had to take loans because they weren't earning the livelihood. And then in order to reimburse the debt, they had to go and work as farm laborers for industrial companies. And uh, they were encouraged to uh, produce even more cotton and less uh, produce that could be consumed. I'll stop there, but we have enough elements to understand that this kind of research links agricultural practices with market liberalization, showing that ecological questions were still intertwined with the social political problems. This work also showed, and it is important that we point it out, that the idea of over-exploitation and uh, natural resource deterioration was very often full of uh, neocolonialism uh, ideas over the uh, developing population. The field of political scientific ecology has been developing ever since, and it's very difficult to give an exhaustive definition, but if we do try to come up with a definition, we may be tempted to say that it's a social, economical, political approach to manage the environment with a focus on the power struggle regarding the access to use and the control of resources from north to south, from local to global. This being said, and before we start uh, talking about how to use this approach uh, for the benefit of biodiversity, I would like to highlight the fact that political and scientific ecology is uh, looking at the construction of scientific knowledge to knowledge policy and the representation of knowledge. What is at stake when we talk about an ecological crisis? Who defines a problem? How? In, with what aim? What I'm trying to uh, get across to you is that scientific problems have been built in a totally social context and the recognition of this context within political and scientific ecology should invite us to perform a detailed analysis on the way in which values and interests, political economies, institutions and networks influence, structure, inform the content of scientific questions and the replies, the political and sociological answers provided.
we always come back to the basis of political ecology. There may be no neutral explanation or representation, a political one of an ecological problem. The problem should always be located in its socio-economic and political context. Now that we have the framework, let us wonder about how we can best use this framework in order to work on problems connected with the loss of biodiversity. Two examples, massive disappearance of bees and uh, ecosystem preservation by creating protected areas. In order to understand the political causes and identify the reasons for, for bee extinction, we can use political ecology in the following way. Not only can we analyze the biophysical causes, pesticides, diseases, invasive species and climate changes, but we can also look at the strategies uh, implemented by a multinational company to keep pesticides on the market, although we know they're dangerous. Difficulties uh, for government to resist lobbying politics, uh, policies from these uh, companies uh, trying to prevent them from banning some practices or products, and the uh, strategies implemented by the farmers to uh, preserve their bees and uh, fruit farmers, fruit growers uh, who have to replace the bees by pollinizing themselves, pollinating themselves. If we analyze uh, the problem, we can understand that we have different visions over the world and uh, we have different uh, preservation conditions for living beings, human and non-humans alike. Another very good example to illustrate uh, the problem is parks and natural reserves. reserves. This is a conventional illustration from South Africa. A prejudiced idea thinks that uh, creating such parks is a positive idea and that the government supporting these ideas are doing something good for the ecosystem. Political ecology work has shown that uh, there is more to eat than meets the eye, and it's much more complex. One of the original problems is a simplistic vision according to which local populations, poor populations, are responsible for environmental degradation of the surrounding ecosystem. Based on this vision, many players for conservation have wrongly concluded that local populations had to be banned from their ancestral habitat. This has had huge, dramatic consequences, jeopardizing the existence of these populations and as well the viability of the project to uh, conserve nature. I'm not going to go into too many details, but following these observations, many political ecology uh, research works compared local realities and the practices of the local populations with the ideas that uh, NGOs and governments had of those populations. We also compared the different visions of nature from the local players in order to demonstrate how good policies for the conservation of biodiversity included local populations and their traditional practices. Traditional practices which are fully compatible with ecosystem preservation, as is the case in uh, reserves uh, in uh, um, um, Brazilian Amazonia, we see some inhabitants in these pictures. We could discuss the interest of uh, scientific political ecology, showing every time that this approach is very efficient when we think about the relationship between nature and the Anthropocene policies. Anthropocene is a word that researchers use to define the unprecedented action that man has had on the planet. In conclusion, and based on the environmental and political problems raised, committed science aiming at preserving all kinds of uh, life on Earth are more than ever needed. And I hope that I have convinced you that political ecology can be one of those sciences.